Moira Brown. Medic, botanist, scholar, engineer, a jack of all trades. Kind of like a fallout version of Johnny Sins. Moira Brown is the owner of the Crater Site Supply in Megaton, possibly the most used vendor in Fallout 3 alongside those at Rivet City. If you've played Fallout 3, then you've met Moira. Whether it was for buying a cute little theme for your house, a mini nuke to slaughter your enemies with, or to get so irradiated that you grew a fourth leg. Yes, you heard me. I said fourth. You know, in this series I try my best to look into more unique and less common characters of the Wasteland, and sure we interact quite a bit with Moira through dialogues, quests, and as a vendor, but that's only the tip of the iceberg as far as I'm concerned. So in this episode let me tell you all about Moira Brown, where did she come from, where did she go, where did she come from, Cotton Eye Joe. Moira Brown was born sometime before 2263 and is 24 years old when the Lone Wanderer first meets her. Although her last name may be Brown, she wasn't actually born in Scotland or Ireland like our good friend Colin Moriarty. She was in fact raised in Canterbury Commons, northeast of Megaton. Strangely, no history of Moira's family can be found in Canterbury Commons, or anywhere else in the wasteland for that matter. Now, although she has read every book that's come through the town and has gained a large amount of knowledge from them, she clearly has no actual experience with the wasteland or really anything outside of her own workshop the Crater Site Supply. In game, the only time that Moira will actively leave the Crater Site Supply is if you blow up Megaton. With the Megaton. Which, we'll get to that later, of course. Being an inventor and a kind, loving soul, Moira was inspired to write a book to help others survive in the wasteland. This was to avoid dangers similar to the incident that happened with her and a domesticated centaur. We, we, we don't talk about the incident with the centaur. The book is aptly named The Wasteland Survival Guide and is actually named after the hint book in Fallout's predecessor, Wasteland. It consists of four main sections, credits, book praise, summary, and tone. Each of these sections will have different contents depending on how many chapters or tasks the player completes fully. If you complete all tasks and chapters, for instance, section 2 will read, This indispensable guidebook contains everything that a survivor in the wasteland could need to know. Whereas, if you complete all chapters incorrectly, the fourth section will read, It's almost too bland to read. This is just as well, as following its advice would be an invitation to a tragic end. Upon completing the Wasteland Survival Guide, the player character is granted a Survival Expert perk. This perk has one of three benefits depending on how many optional tasks were completed. Each of these three benefits also have a random encounter tied to them. If you complete fewer than five optional tasks, you get the Junior Survivor benefit. The random encounter for this is finding a poorly armed Wastelander fighting a mole rat. If the Wastelander survives, they will give the player the book and tell them that it's good for a laugh. If you complete between 5 and 8 optional tasks, however, you get the Survival Expert benefit. The random encounter for this is also a Wastelander fighting a mole rat, however, this Wastelander will always win. The Wastelander will then ask the player character if they are the author of the book. The last random encounter comes from the Survival Guru benefit if you complete all optional tasks. In this encounter, the Lone Wanderer meets a well-equipped Wastelander finishing off a wounded Mire Lurk, Rad Scorpion, or a Raider. When the Wastelander finishes, they ask the player if they wrote the book. If you reply yes, then you get a word of thanks and up to 25 caps. You could buy a whole Psycho and Medex with 25 caps. You know, after all your hard work completing the survival guide, getting irradiated, your legs blown off by landmines, blowing the legs off of mole rats, reading boring books and going through boring history lessons, you'd hope that the book would become popular, wouldn't you? Well, thankfully it actually does. In a mere four years, the survival guide managed to reach the Mojave Wasteland. How else do you think the courier survived a bullet to the head? By 2287, during Fallout 4's setting, the Wasteland Survival Guide had become a complete series. A complete series that only teaches Wastelanders and completely ignores helping settlements. I got word of a settlement that needs our help. Now, of course, all of these benefits occur if you help Moira complete the book. But what if you don't? What if you're as mean as those kids that stole my lunch money? Ahem, <clears throat> last, last week. Well, there is the Dream Crusher perk, granted to you if you manage to persuade Moira into quitting the book and not writing it. You can do this at any stage of the quest and will gain negative karma upon doing so. The Dream Crusher perk reduces crit hits to you by 50%, gives you a discount of 30% at the Crater Site Supply, and Moira can now repair up to 72% from 54%. Knowing this, it's actually a lot more enticing than completing the guide and getting the Survival Guru perk. If you do convince Moira out of writing the book, she will respond with, I guess you're right, it was a silly idea. I'll just stick to doing what's important. And then she's gonna go cry in the corner of the Crater Site Supply for hours. You monster. 
Now, that's not Moira's only fate. Oh, no. Let's imagine that after Moira making the Lone Wanderer travel through the wastes doing all of these crazy and cumbersome tasks, that the Lone Wanderer simply has enough. Well, after a brief conversation with a man named Burke, putting an end to Moira's silly guide can become a reality. You can blow Moira into Bioshock's Columbia is what I'm getting at here. Don't get all high and mighty, we've all done it. If you've not at least once detonated Megaton, then you've not experienced the full potential of Fallout 3. Unfortunately, detonating the nuke doesn't affect the Wasteland Survival Guide all that much. If the quest was unstarted before detonation, Moira will be found in the underworld unharmed. Kind of. Simply stating that she was out of town when it was detonated. However, the more interesting bit is if the player meets Moira and then detonates the nuke, she won't just die or go to the underworld. Instead, she will be sitting outside the ruins of Megaton. Ghoulified. This ghoulification opens up some unique dialogue, including the Lone Wanderer stating to Moira, Don't take this the wrong way, but you got ugly real fast. Which is actually a quote from the 1992 film Army of Darkness. Honey. You got real lucky. Unfortunately, as funny as Ghoul Moira is, it isn't canon. In Fallout Shelter during a quest in Chapter 8, 10 years after the events of Fallout 3, Moira is at the Commonwealth and is trying to fulfill her mission to tame and ride Mirelurks. Because of course she is. But she accidentally traps herself in the Mirelurk lair. She introduces herself as coming from the capital. One of the team members recognizes her as the author of the Wasteland Survival Guide and claims to be her biggest fan. She agrees to sign their copy and after she joins the player's vault and shows interest in studying its ecological environment. This is only from a story perspective however, as she still needs to be recruited gameplay wise. Now I've been saving the best part until last and that is Moyer Brown's Afterward. This is the epilogue of Fallout 3 and it was only included in the first edition of the collector's edition Fallout 3 official game guide, written as a terminal entry. Now just before I go ahead, the start of the afterword has a username and password. The username of course being Moira Brown. I would love to know the password, I just bet it's something ridiculous knowing Moira Brown. Anyway, the afterword reads as follows. Welcome Moira, it is another lovely day for science, which I assume is her message of the day. Daily log. Experiment reports. Irradiated agriculture, good response from mutt fruit, strangely aggressive response to baseline sample. Purified water, very helpful. Deathclaw communication, no language that I can discern unless mutilating assistance counts? What would they have to say anyway? Jefferson Purifier. Guards still refuse to allow access to see how the Purifier works. They say it's to prevent sabotage, but I think they aren't entirely certain. Personal note, just chipped out another crate of survival guides and all the caravans just can't seem to get enough of them. Sheriff Sims says they've really put Megaton on the map. Pretty ironic since I've had to redraw that map about a million times since the first edition came out 20 years ago. At least all the attention means there's no shortage of assistance. But I'm never gonna get another assistant like the Lone Wanderer who stumbled into my shop so long ago. Just about everyone in the Capital Wasteland has a story about the Lone Wanderer, even though precious few ever really knew him. But that doesn't stop them from telling crazy tall tales about how he saved their lives or blew up a mountain or ate a car or something. Heck, if you get Sims drunk, he'll tell you that his dad died because of the Wanderer, even though he saved the town. Well, it's a good thing, baby Sims, that I didn't fucking save the town. People can't even agree on whether the Wanderer was a man or a woman, much less a saint or a monster. But they all agree on one thing. The Lone Wanderer changed the capital wasteland. Of course, that's why I'm working on the new book compiling the best and most useful tales of the Lone Wanderer for the next generation. It's not easy sorting out all of the conflicting stories, but that'll be half the fun for the readers. More importantly, between all of those crazy stories of bravery, barbarity, and everything in between, we can all find a reason to keep on fighting our war for survival. I guess some things never change, huh? War. War never changes. That concludes our episode featuring Moira Brown. Also, just as a side note and a bit of an extra, I want to read this bug description for Fallout 3, which I'm pretty sure sums up Moira Brown fairly well. Even when Moira is dead, opening her crater side supplies container and stealing an item, she replies, hey, that's valuable junk, despite being dead. That sums up Moira. If you think I've missed any information on her, do let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything new, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy or learn anything new, then give it a thumbs down. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Behind the Character, where I'll be looking at a character that you all know of but have never truly seen. Until next time.